Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Connect In. It's our last one of James. Woo! <laughs> five weeks we've done this, five weeks of James. And I have a full house tonight. Really? Hey. You're all in my house. I'm in your house. Well, at Jason's work, but otherwise in the house. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to one of our fabulous Connect groups. Some of you <laughs> might not have met them because it kind of all happened been formed since COVID, hasn't it? Really ISO history. 1, we formed in ISO 1. ISO 1, stage 1, there, there they were. Um, let's start with the two that we are more familiar with. Al, introduce yourself to everyone. Hi, I'm Elster. I've been part of Moreland for a while, 15 years or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've had a few roles around the church with the, uh, the band and uh, youth and children's ministries. Uh, currently run Tribe with my daughter. Uh, professionally, I work for a software company and we develop wealth management software. So lots to do in the superannuation and pension space. Mm. Al does a great job with our young teens. Uh, I don't know how he gets my young boy to say anything, but he does. So he always <laughs> comes back and tells me what's going on, which is good. Okay. Jace, hello, friend. Yeah, I'm Jace. I'm a research scientist with CSL. Working back late tonight on COVID research, but um, it's all very exciting. Love being part of the tribe at, at Moreland. It's just such a great supportive place. And I love this Connect group. They're so, so helpful through this whole time. Oh, yeah. So good. Di, welcome. Jace says he's a bit worried about the two dies today, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> so Hi, my name's Di. Thank you. I'm go. Oh well. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm a professional nanny, so I look after children all day. So that's lots and lots of fun. So I've been doing that for about 27 years. So oh, lots of fun. Oh my goodness, when you have children, normally after 27 years, you hope they've left the nest, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> that would take a lot, well done. All right, Belinda, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Belinda. Yes. I, um, it's lots of fun. I stepped foot in the Moreland Church in, I think it was February. When we came. Yes. Yes. And, um... And that happened through choir, really, through Jason and, um, and yeah, I, at the moment, kind of tend my usual church. So this has been really, really helpful and a um, great way to connect with um, a group of like-minded people. Belinda's a regular at our prayer meetings too, so she's of connected in both ways and we love having her part of that well tonight we're going to head into james and we're going to break it up like we did on sunday into three parts so if you've got your bibles open it to james 5 and the first section we're going to look at is james 5 1 to 6 with the hot topic of money and honestly money jason's rock. edits on sunday were hilarious show me the money <laughs> We might have to like Google box Di and Andrew watching watching Sundays to see what our reactions are to the edits because we kill ourselves laughing. But uh, Al, I want you to start if you can talk to us about what really stood out to you in this little section. Although it's about money, there's something deeper there. I think in all of that. Um, yeah, I think it's um, there's a whole lot in there. It's about motivation, your motives. I, I think you know, money in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Where's your heart? What are you yeah. using your money for? How are you gaining your money? Is it through honest gains or through dishonest gains? You know, it says here about the wages you failed to pay the workers. You know, it was crying out against you. So yeah, a few yeah. days work for a few days pay is a, is a good way of looking at that. It, yeah, I, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? Every time we talk about money, we're really talking about our heart. Because mm. money's nothing to God. Like, no. he's the creator of the universe. Like, it's nothing to God, but it's about our heart and how we conduct ourselves in that space. Mm. Di, what did you grab out of that first section? Sorry. I think Di's on a bit of I delay. think it's a matter of how, how you're using it. It's a matter of how you're using your resources, I think. Um, you know, we all 
work and and work hard for our money but you know we can't take it with us so mm. you know we're supposed to be using it for God's glory so you know within the church um for charities you know for people in need because we can't take it with us mm. we only need a certain amount to get through our lives and everything so I think for me it's it's a matter of yeah it's a resource that's been given to me and how can I use it Oh, that's a good line. It's a resource that's been given to me. So how can I use it? That's awesome. Yeah, it's a great attitude. Really, really good. Actually, we had someone contact us after Sunday and said they were so challenged by our message that they've actually sent some money to be used for those in need on a, that just as an extra that they wow. received um, a bit of extra money in their pay and felt after watching Sunday that they didn't actually really need it, but at the moment other people do, and they've, they've sent it through to us, which we can then facilitate to those in the community because nice we actually work. have a lot of international students in our area, people. Yes. <laughs> we have a lot. And to say we're inundated with international students and the need out there is an understatement, our poor mm. doorways people. So that money will get used to well and truly help mm. in that area. But, you know, how amazing that someone's heart was so open to hear that story and exactly what Di said. It was a resource that they have that they can give to someone else, which God can glorify. It's really good. Well, Linda, was there anything that really stood out for you? Uh, I think I was listening and um, thinking to myself that even if you didn't necessarily have money to physically hand over well what other ways could you potentially what other resources do you have that yes yeah to contribute so it's not necessarily physical money as such that becomes the trade-off in that regard yeah well that goes back to what dice says isn't it about resource what's our resources that god's given us and how do we use it? And that mm -hmm. could be money, that could be time, mm -hmm. talents, that could be anything really in the scheme of things. Mm. It's so true. Jace. You know, it made me think of the Israelites in, in the desert wandering around and how God provided for them manna every day. Yeah. And it was only enough for one day, it's provisions. Yeah. And I think we live in such a privileged society where we've got plenty of money and it, it, we kind of tend to not rely on God as much as what we probably should yeah. um, because we're so well resourced. So I think it is, it's a really a, a good idea to give to others and, and not be so self-reliant and maybe make a bit of a sacrifice every now and then. Mm. I think it does, it drives us closer to God and more dependent mm. on him. Do you know what really stood out to me was verse four where yeah. it said, um, for listen, he, hear the cries of the field workers who you've cheated their pay, the wages you've held back cry out against you. The cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. And it just really stuck out to me that we get away with nothing with God. Like, mm -hmm. And this isn't really even about money. This is about how we treat people. Like mm -hmm. if we are not giving God honour in, in our relationships and our conversation, he hears that. And he is on it. So we don't really get away with anything mm. <laughs> in the scheme of things. So that really in relation didn't have anything to do with money other than, you know, they weren't paying fair wages. But it was more about, again, the heart and our actions and how we treat and honour other people um, in this space. And so it was like, you've got away with nothing. Mm. So it really that just stood out to me most in, in that mm. section altogether. I really want to get to the next section because I think, um, I think James 5, 1 to 6, even though it's about money, it's just the continuation of that whole theme through James is about how's your heart and what are you doing. Uh, but I, I really love this next part of James, which is 7 to 12, and it's titled Patience in Suffering in my Bible. Yep. And um, I don't know about you, but when I'm suffering, I'm not very patient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not <laughs> and people normally know <laughs> I am suffering because <laughs> I tell people I'm suffering <laughs> so you know it's quite challenging this section here and so I really want to get into this is kind of me for the meat of this section and I and I, I really like the last bit so I want to get into it 
And um, I'm just going to kind of chuck it around a bit before I give my take on it. But, but was there anything that really stood out to anyone in particular in this part of the, of the passage? Um, it's a bit, it's challenging, right? Because it says about being patient, but it also says about don't grumble, right? So if you... <laughs> yep, that's, that's the part. That's you know, the part. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, you know, it's something, something a bit, you know, something's not going well, but, you know, yeah. don't, <laughs> and be patient. It's like, it's, it's, it's like uh, so natural and a tendency, you know, you, you want to... If you're having having a rough time or whatever, you want to have a make sure people know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so challenging, though, isn't it? It's like so challenging on your behaviours. I can see Di smiling and nodding. What do you got on that, Di? Oh, patience! Like it's it's one of those words. I always ask children, "What does patience mean?" And for me, I, when I teach children about patience, it's normally, I say it's learning to wait. So it's, it's the process of waiting. And, you know, I've many times where I've been waiting in line with children at a checkout and someone will, ahead of me will say, oh, you go first. And I said, no, we're having a life lesson about patience and we're learning to wait. And that can be really, really hard. I totally understand it's really hard. But for me, if I'm waiting for something for, my, for myself, I know I have to be so patient with it and just persevere because I know God's working something out in, in the background and, and everything. But being human, it is hard because, you know, you, you just want to go, I want it and I want it now and it's really hard and I'm just going to tell everybody I'm really grumbly and, and all that. <laughs> but it's the, it's the process of learning to wait. It's so comforting that we're not alone in this. <laughs> it's so comforting. But you're right, the waiting can sometimes be so painful and hard, can't it, that we... And I think today we live in a society yeah. that's bam, bam, instant, you know. Yeah. Like we were talking uh, over dinner about how, you know, you used to have to wait to use the phone in the house you know, yeah. back in mm -hmm. my day. You know, mm -hmm. we had to get permission. And if you rang your friends, yes. you like had to speak to their parents first and then speak to them. And normally you'd get quiz, why are you calling? What have you got to say? Like, what are you going? It wasn't just, you know, you could just speak to them. And, but now I just text or I just call or, and it's all there at my fingertips. Like, you know, our little devices literally hold the world, don't they? At our fingertips mm. and it's so instant. And I just wonder if waiting is almost becoming a thing of the past because I think there's like two things that makes uh, our house freak out is, the, the bars on the Wi-Fi disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all like, I've got lag. This is lag. This is why I hear this all the time. Or the battery life of your, you know, your phone shrinking. It's like, oh, you know, and they're the things that cause us panic now. And back in, back in the day, just didn't have those problems. You had to wait for everything. But, you know, things are moving so fast. There's good and bad with it with this and so just to be reminded again that the waiting is is part of the process in that belinda did anything jump out at you um just about how like to praise god now in the suffering yes and um when your prayers have been answered so yeah I've that's the opposite of grumbling Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So, because I, for most people, oh, they said the lights have just gone on. The video lights went out for a minute there. Yeah. I'm the last one here. Yeah, pay, pay the power bill. <laughs> we have a tendency to praise God when your prayer has been mm. answered, not along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I referenced one of my favourite songs was Praise Before My Breakthrough um, and God gave it to me in, in a season of my life where I was just praying for a breakthrough and, you know, I was grumbling a lot about it. And uh, this, you know, God gives me gifts of songs. There's a couple of songs in the last few years he's given me and this song was given to me at that season and I, I just, I played it because all my words were grumbling. <laughs> So like I'm going to use this to help me 
come out of that. But it's so difficult, isn't it? Like, because our natural instinct is to grumble, but then to praise, that's a discipline. Well, I suppose in some ways it's a bit like trying to, looking at gratitude because it turns around from negative yep. to positive. Yes. I like to refer to it as active waiting, Di. Um, yeah. Like we don't have to just sit around and wait. I, I think in G, in that time, people were expecting Jesus to return straight away, yeah. and, like in their lifetime, and that just wasn't part of God's plan. But in the waiting, we can be praying, we can be praising. But one of the words that really stu stood out to me was when they were talking about Job, and it said yeah. the Lord ultimately treated him you know, with kindness. And I think that ultimately is a good word that keeps in context that we, we live in eternity. We live in oh, the yes. light of eternity, not just the immediate situation that we find ourselves in now. Mm -hmm. Like what we talked about last week, I think our life's a vapour, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, just <laughs> and just a blink of an eye. <laughs> I tell you, I heard about that mist for weeks. He was so excited about the mist. <laughs> <laughs> he kept saying we're driving around. He goes, it's really captured me, this mist, that we're a mist. I'm like, okay, I'm going to mystify you in a minute. <laughs> Let's get a new yeah. <laughs> But is it, this is, this is um, the devotional we're doing, this technique of, of words that's, that stand out and grab us. And why? What, what does yeah. that resonate within us? What does that um, reveal in us? I'm, I'm going to dob on my husband this week who did it and the word deeds came up and he comes out, we had a whole day plan. Don't worry about that. He comes in, says, well, it's your devotional. I've got to go and do four deeds today. <laughs> I'm like, we got to do what? <laughs> oh, this word. And it would just cat, like, it absolutely catch me. He had to, he said, I've got to go. Mm. If I don't go, I've not honoured God. This is what he's telling me to do. We've got to do four deeds. I said, does that mean I'm coming? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it does. <laughs> so we just our whole day was changed. But I tell you, by the end of the day, we felt so blessed yeah. for doing right. these things. And we thought we were out doing, you know, good deeds, but actually we were just receiving blessings. Like the word changed. It was like we were just getting blessings. It was great. But this is the new, you know, this this has been a challenge. I'm hoping by week sort of five people have worked out how to do it because the first week I think would have been very challenging and we were hearing back from this is really hard to you know focus on a word and and sort of meditate on that but as the weeks have gone I hope that people have really engaged with it and exactly like Jason was saying this word ultimately has stood out to him mm -hmm. Andrew's got missed and deeds and there's lots of other things that are coming out but God uses all of that ultimately in the picture and blesses our life with it doesn't he which is so fantastic well it I've leads us to this, i've loved that last section of the devotional which is the axio that like putting it into action i think it's so important that we just don't read the bible but that we actually think about what does god want me to do with this you know yes that's it we can often just keep, keep for ourselves right instead of yeah. actually what does he want to yeah it's really good all right my favorite topic we're going to go into which is 13 to 21, and it's prayer through trials. Um, but actually in my, in my Bible, it's actually the power of prayer. So there's just two yep. different takes on that um, in how you, how you look at it. And actually they've even divided the last section of which is restore wandering believers um, so when I did it in my Bible, it's broken down even again, which is just fantastic. And um, I think we'll just hit into this top, fabulous topic of prayer. I love it. And it's so powerful and it works. Um, so Belinda, what did you grab out of 13 and 20 in regard to prayer through that? Um, well, just how pow powerful it can really be for um, someone else, especially if you are that person who intercedes for someone else. Yes. Yeah. It's one of the best gifts we could give anyone is to pray for them. Yeah. I just, yeah. Uh, just it's so it's just so powerful to be praying for people. Di, what did you grab out? 
think for the first couple of verses there, it's it's basically pray in everything. So, you know, if you're sick, pray. If you're happy, yeah. praise God in your prayers and things like that. So, and praying for other people is just so important. And it's such a gift that you can give people that you can actually just, you know, let me just sit down and pray for you. You know, and and you don't even have to say that to someone. You just do it in your head, in your heart for that person right there and then and and everything. And that, you know, God is so accessible. It's just a wonderful Mm. conversation that we can have with him anytime, anywhere. And, you know, we don't have to pick up the phone to, to call him or talk to him. We can just talk to him anytime anywhere my greatest prayer life is in the car driving to work every yes. morning and coming home every yeah. night it's a 45 minute drive so you know I get a really good prayer session in and I love it it's just it's just that simple conversation that you can just have with God and just thank him and praise him and then pray for those who really need prayer but it is such an important and wonderful gift and I really love praying it's great yeah. fun. it is but it is fun too. yeah it is yeah it's great you know, God's I think that most people and, I think most people are open for, with, for people to pray for them, even if they, they aren't believers or not. I find that if I'm speaking to someone and say, can I pray with you? They'll go, oh, yeah, sure. Like it's yeah. not, doesn't feel unusual even for a non-believer for, for them to allow you to do that. Like I actually find <clears throat> that people are more open to prayer than we give them credit for, Yeah, in, you know, yeah. quite often. Al, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, look, I'm in, in line with the with idea, just, um, you know, if you're in trouble, pray, if you're happy, pray, praise, you know, like, I think that's great, you know, pray, pray in all circumstances. But um, I had a Bible study teacher some years ago, and his, his favourite verse, like, prayer was a really hot topic for him as well, you know, he loved, loved to study prayer and talk about prayer and love to pray, it was great. But his his favourite verse that he'd pray to us is from is from here in James. And it's the um, he always used to quote the uh, the King James version to us. The, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his key <laughs> verse. <laughs> it was his key verse. But um, yeah. you know, the, the the NIV, you know, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You know, um, so just the the effectiveness of praying regularly for somebody. Mm. Um, I think you like the King James Version because they added in um, fervent as, a, as another adjective in there, the fervent yeah. prayer. You know, how, you know, it's not just a, meh, nah, I'm going to pray. It's It was really mm. getting into it. So, uh, yeah. Well, I've been in some powerful prayer meetings where you just feel the Holy Spirit really take on people and they just pray things they don't even know. I was praying with someone last week and they texted me the next day and said, you're not aware, but this was happening in my life. And when you said that, it was actually yeah. an answer to prayer that I'd said to God, I need a sign and you said this was exactly what and I'm like I don't know I couldn't I wouldn't even remember my prayer the next day like but when you just are in tune with the Holy Spirit he speaks through you to other people if you allow him in that space Jace, this has got to be, we've got to, you know, round off with you. This has got to be one of your favourite topics. Well, it's one of the pillars of our church, isn't it, Di? One of the four yes, pillars. Jason, is prayer. It is. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a real unfair advantage we have. That's the way I look at it. Um, when, when we got this concept that we're not struggling against flesh and blood, but against yes. rulers and authorities, that's what it says in the word. It's a power Once we power. capture that idea and we put it into action, it really is an unfair advantage. I had some things come against me this week, you know, in my personal relationships and stuff, and I just committed them to God, those fears, those worries, and I really saw breakthrough. And mm-hmm. our Connect group here, we've, we've been using an app called Echo, and yep. we share our prayer requests on there, and we're praying for each other. And every time you pray for each other, you can send a notification. So often it'll, I'll be just... Oh, do, you know, doing my regular day and it'll pop up, you know, Di just prayed for you. And it, it's just so wonderful to know that I've got people in my, you know, tribe that are praying for me. Yeah. And it makes a difference. Even this week I've seen breaks, breakthroughs in, in my relationships that, have, that wouldn't have happened otherwise, I'm sure. It's so true, isn't it? Like you, I've got people who text me and message me that we're praying, you know, praying for you. And just the thought that you were on someone's mind and they cared enough to seek the creator of yeah. the universe on your behalf. 
It's so liberating and so affirming, I think. It really is. We have to be so brave to like when when we feel prompted from God to speak to someone, you just Mm got to be brave and put it out there. Even if it's a mistake, it doesn't matter. But when you're right, when you're spot on, it can really bless someone. Oh, I totally agree. We've got to be courageous. Um, I'm journeying with some people at the moment and we're talking about being brave in then how that works. And... um, I think, you know, and the, and the, the line is that w- what brave are you going to step into today? So what, what brave way are you going to step in Good. today? Yeah. And so we, we're talking sort of that language and, and sometimes it's just bravery to send someone a message when you think, like I honestly, I've sent people scriptures and thought, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure about this, God, like, some of this scripture is a bit, you know, and then they come back and go, oh, my goodness, you have no idea how relevant that was. We went, oh, thank goodness. One, I didn't offend you. Or two, I don't know. Like, you know, because out of context, it could be taken the wrong way. I, but I'll quite often say, look, this is what the Lord said to me today. I'm just sending it to you. I hope it means something to you. And and they often go, yes, it does. Or I have had times where they said, not sure yet, but I'm going to I'm gonna pray on it because I trust yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and then within a week, they say, oh, <laughs> Like that's, you know, that's come alive in that way. So okay. I've got some pretty honest your friends. faith when you do that too. Oh, yeah. you know, it builds, doesn't it? Together. And it builds momentum. Yeah. Well, that is James 5 we've nutted out. And I can hear everyone saying, hang on a minute, we've got five more minutes to go. But okay. we're wrapping just a little bit early today because we want to make sure and remind everyone they know what's coming up for this week because next week there'll be no connect in. Okay, so why is there no connecting next week? What is happening? We have decided that as a tribe, we're going to practice a biblical Sabbath, which means that we stop all paid and unpaid work for a full day. And so that that takes a bit of planning and preparation to get ready for that so that you're not tempted to do the dishes, you're not tempted to go wash the car or pay the bills. Um, and we really feel that as a church that this is a really great way to live your life because if, if you're not resting, you're not, a, you're not as effective, you're not as creative. And when you do practice this, it's going to really revolutionise, you know, your creativity and, and all that sort of stuff. It's a, it's a great practice to put in place. God did it right from the beginning, didn't he? He did. When, he in rested. creation. So what happened is we were kind of... Um, going along as normal and i was just saying before that god's thrown a few spanners in the works on plans that andrew and i have set before and we really want to be in tune with god and be flexible and we felt really called to call everyone into this sabbath time because we're really we're in this almost feels like we've been a whole year in COVID. (laughs) you know like we arrived three weeks went into lockdown Melbourne, welcome to Melbourne. You're going into lockdown. <laughs> That's what it's been. And it feels like the world is so different right now than it was six months ago. And even though we're isolated and maybe don't have as many activities, I think some of us are busier than ever because we've had to learn all these new ways to communicate. We've had to learn all these new ways to engage with each other. I mean, we weren't even doing anything like this six months ago. We weren't even thought to do anything like this six months ago. So We just really want to make sure we're stopping. The first one is stopping. Mm -hmm. Jason's going, I don't know the four. I'm going to tell him the four now. Stopping. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to rest. We're just going to take a big breath in. We're going to rest. We're going to delight. So we're going to find something we we want to do with God. Like my boys are going to be forced to delight in walking with us. (laughs) <laughs> the beach, going to the beach. How delightful! <laughs> I don't think we're allowed the beach. We'll probably have to go oh, to too far away. Lake. It's too far away. We'll probably have to go to the lake. And we're going to contemplate. We're going to just see. <laughs> Chase has gone in the dark. <laughs> I'm already. still here. I'm just from the lights on. <laughs> and then we're going to contemplate. We're going to just say, yeah. you know what, God, you're so good. And it, and you know, I just think there's so many things we could be thankful for that has provided us with the opportunity to be so connected in an isolated season that we're going to give God glory to. And so that is what's happening as of tomorrow to the next Friday. Um, I do think, though, that 
Um, we do have challenge accepted, which will just be posted, but it's already done. It's not a case of we're doing it. It's just preset. So that'll be happening tomorrow. I think they've got Stephen who's just had knee surgery. So it's definitely pre-done because he hasn't done it since knee surgery. So it's definitely pre-done. Um, so we're really encouraging everyone to take a spiritual breath. I think that's how I'm looking at it. Big breath in and a big breath Ooh. out. And it's not a week off. It's not a day off. It's actually time that we're saying we're just going to suspend everything so we can really sit in God in however that looks for you. But what we really want you to do is when you're doing it, maybe take a photo or if you're a poet, write a poem or if you're an artist, Ashlyn, do something lovely for us and send it in so that we can see what God is doing in and through your life in this way. Uh, so that's happening as of tomorrow until we will. So you won't pretty much see anything online. There's no Mad Major Monday. There's my pre-warning. There's no Mad Monday Monday. <laughs> <laughs> the one after is already planned so hold on for that we've got a big one for coming back so um we will email out on the 24th which is the friday our new devotional so once we come out of our sabbath we're going into a new series called testify we're very excited about this we've got four guests that are going to be with us every sunday i mean one for each sunday so four weeks four guests um coming in to share their testimony and what they think testimony means to them and in this world um, so the 26th is the next time you'll see us online, but on the 24th, you'll get an email with the testify and then it'll be up on our website then as well as everything because Al and Jason are fabulous with that stuff. But Jason, on the Thursday night, on the Thursday night, we, we have will prayer. not stop praying. We so don't stop praying. We're going to have Zoom <laughs> prayer on Thursday yeah. night at 8.15. So prayer will still happen because it is a foundation of our church, as Jason has so right. Pillars, yeah. <laughs> so that will still happen at 8.15 and that link will go up as well. It'll all get sent out this week in the mail, in the email, on the line, however it works, it'll all go out. <laughs> so thank you to our fabulous guests. It's been so lovely to have you with us and everyone's now met Di and Belinda. So if you see them along the way, say hello. They're part of our wonderful crew here. Thank you again always to Alice, Sarah and Jason who are a delight to have every time. We are now, Jason's definitely, he's just... Oh, he's just had enough. <laughs> Black <laughs> battery. Has been entertaining tonight, I tell you. Uh, we are One now. thing I would say, Di, though, is yep. if any of our tribe or anyone out there wants to be in a connect group, yes. please reach out to us because I tell you, if you're not in a group, you need to be. And, yes. and you'll find, you'll get so much benefit out of it. These guys here are a testament to that. So yep. do reach out to us if you if you need a group to be in. Yep. We've got room in our group too. We, so. we were saying really, there's no reason to be isolated in this season. Yep. We have so many opportunities for people to connect in. Connect in groups, prayer, Zoom, our materials. Like just, we can't do it for you. You have to take the responsibility. Like be we brave. can't. Yeah, be brave, walk into your brave and just put your hand up and we'll slot you in somewhere with someone somehow. <laughs> That's how it goes. We now have enough time to make a cuppera and find the link on our Facebook page and join us for prayer, which is always awesome. Zoom prayer. This does not go live. This just stays internal because we're praying. It doesn't need to be for everyone. So click, click the Zoom link and you can join uh, Andrew will jump in next to me and some of these crew for prayer at 8.15. We have a fantastic time connecting with God and connecting in with each other. Thank you, wonderful Connect group. Thank you. Thank and we look forward to having you back again one day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> it's you. It's been great. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya.